Hi my friends and welcome back to a new video. Um, today I think it's about time that I give you an update on my January reading challenge and also introduce the reading challenge for the month of February. Um, for those of you who have not watched the video where I explained or introduced my challenge, um, I thought that this year my plan is to read all the books on my TBR, but it's a little difficult for me to maybe sometimes motivate myself to read the old books on my TBR. So I thought it's cool if I introduce some challenges every month and pick the books that I want to read according to those challenges. And yeah, that's what I've been doing. And so far, I think I like it a lot. I hope you do too. Maybe you want to join in on it. And maybe you have some books that fit to the challenge. If so, pick them up and maybe we can read together um, and complete these challenges. I would like that a lot. But yeah, let's start right away. And I want to start with the January challenge. So my January challenge was to read books that have a wintry theme, a wintry theme setting maybe snow ice you know anything that makes you feel like winter to cozy up on a blank in under a blanket and also i had a lot of yeah thrillers i like suspense to read i, I like to read suspense when it's cold outside so the three books i had picked for january were rock paper scissor by alice feeney the Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce and The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. And I can proudly announce that I read all of these books. So I'm very happy. There's still a little bit of the month left, but I have completed my challenge already. And yeah, The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce and Alice Feeney, Rock, Paper, Scissor were both thrillers or suspense novels and the sanatorium was set in the Swiss Alps in the winter. Um, there was a sanatorium which was turned into a hotel and the guests were snowed in, nobody could leave. And then, you know, crimes started to happen. So that was the wintry setting here. And then here the wintry setting was um, that it was a couple that wanted to basically save their marriage with one last trip together. And they did this trip to Scotland, to the Highlands. And it was also in the winter, there was snow everywhere. It was a very isolated place. So very similar sitting, settings, although in two very different countries, but the settings were very wintry and I loved them. And yeah, what can I say? One of these books was very, very great. I loved it. I can only recommend it to anybody who loves suspense and thrillers. And I think the author really did a lot with the little because there weren't very many characters, but there was still a twist and everything that you love about suspense. And then I must say that the other one was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, I see why people love it. There were some very great parts, but overall I was a little disappointed, but I also had big expectations. But yeah, it just didn't work for me, but that's okay. Um, not every book can be for everyone. I'll talk more about why and what exactly they're about in my reading wrap up. But yeah, the thrillers, that was, those were the thrillers. And then let's talk a little bit about The Great Alone, which, oh my goodness, I still can't stop thinking about this book. It just flashed me completely. I mean, I just sat there the day after and I thought, wow what did i just read i was flashed for two days i could not pick up any other book i loved it it honestly could be one of my favorite books if not the favorite books the the favorite book i just loved it so much it's set in alaska and also you know we see alaska in the winter a lot in the harsh climate so that was the wintry aspect of this and yeah we follow a family that moves there and that goes through a lot of struggles domestic struggles as well as struggles of fitting into this new environment and yeah it was a coming of age story a domestic drama you could say and wow i mean I will go into the details in my reading wrap up, but yeah, I mean, this was a highlight already this early in January. All right, then other than those three books, I, um, for the first time in my life, listened to an audiobook, and it was an autobiography. 
um, I will talk, do I tell you? No, I will tell you my reading wrap up, but let me just tell you, it was also very cool, very good. This book is all over the place right now. Um, a lot of people have been reading it. And so I joined in on it and I don't regret it. Um, we'll tell you about that in my monthly wrap up. I'm sorry if I keep saying that, <laughs> but um, yeah, watch the monthly wrap up, I guess is what I want to say. No, um, other than that, I want to show you real quick, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, because that is the book that I'm currently reading. It is a book on, yeah, writing really and storytelling, how you tell um, an eff effective story, a story that draws in the audience, that has um, a great plot. And yeah, I'm working on a new writing project right now, and I'm in the phase of planning. I'm in the planning phase. And I've never really read any writing advice books or writing advice, um, yeah. I have never really looked at writing advice in general and I've completed a bunch of projects before so I thought okay maybe now is the time where I could pick up a book and see um, what I've been doing good all along or maybe if there's some areas I can improve on. So I picked this one up because I've read a lot about it, a lot of um, writers and creative people have recommended it and so far it's very good. I don't know if I will finish this till the end of the month because yeah, I'm very slow reading it, as you can say, see, I mark a lot, um, I highlight a lot in this book, so it takes me a while to go through it, but definitely in February I'll finish it. All right, that was a lot of talk about my January reading challenge and the books I'm currently reading or have read this month, so let's move on to the February challenge. And I thought, okay, February, that's a month where, yeah, it's not really my favorite month, I should say. Um, it's usually nasty outside. I don't really like the weather, especially where I live. I don't know, maybe it's different where you are, but where I am, it's not a month I enjoy going out at all. So I want to use my books to basically flee from the setting. And that's why I picked for a challenge that the book that you're going to read for February or the book I'm going to read has to take place in a different setting. That could either mean that it takes place in a different part of the country, maybe in a different country, or in a different world altogether. Also, I um, thought that if you don't want to do that, then another challenge is to pick up a book that's of a genre that you maybe have never read before, or a genre that you don't really read as much, um, to basically read something new or something that you're not used to as much. And yeah, I have picked four books for my challenge um, and the first one is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I picked it because it takes place in Malibu in California and I can really use some uh, sunshine, some summer vibes right now. It's about um, the Riva family that always throws a big party at the end of summer and at this party this year things are going to go down. Um, people have secrets that come out and a lot of drama is going to happen. So that's my first pick and I've always wanted to read more by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So excited for that. I've only ever read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So Malibu Rising will be next. I also picked The Elegance of the Hedgehog, which takes place in Paris. Um, in a hotel, basically, not a hotel, how you say, in a, an apartment building where there's a concierge and, you know, personnel. And I love Paris. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. So really excited to read about Paris. And then we have two books that actually fulfill both challenges. They're both taking place in another setting. And also there are genres that I don't really read that much. The first one being Credence by Penelope Douglas. It is a romance novel and it's set in Colorado. So I think Colorado is a great state. I have always wanted to visit and one day I promise I'll get around to it. But for now I have to do it through a book. Um, we have the main character who grew up very wealthy, but um, the parents weren't around much. And then one day they die. So she becomes an orphan and has to move to her uncle and her cousins in Colorado. 
I'm usually not a big fan of love stories, but I don't know, I keep picking one up every now and then, hoping that it might change, and maybe this is the book that will change everything. Who knows? And then we have the last book, it's Dragonfly by Anne McCarthy. Um, I've been recommended this by a friend, it's fantasy. And I don't really much read much fantasy, and in this case it's even high fantasy, which is something that I don't think I've ever read. Like, I've read a bunch of urban fantasy novels, but most of them earlier in my life, so this will be something new for me. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it or not, but the premise of this book sounds very interesting. We are in Pern and um, it's a different world where every, I think it's 200 years or something like that, a substance rains from the sky that destroys everything. But it happens so rarely that people forget about it and think it's basically just a myth. So I think it sounds so interesting and yeah, we'll see how I'm gonna like it. So yeah, those are the books I picked. Um, I'll see if I can finish all of them, but that's my challenge. Um, if you have picked some of your own, let me know down below which ones you're going with. Um, I would love to hear it. And yeah, for now, I just want to say thank you for watching and enjoy the challenge. And yes, have a good day. Stay safe, stay healthy. And till next time, bye bye.